Look! You need to get the boys! Did the kids come out to me? Did you see it? That when it was over here, it looked so crazy. It looked like it's on fire. What's up guys and welcome back to another creepy TikTok compilation. Smash that like button and that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos and let's dive straight in. No conspiracy has ever been right. Correct. Conspiracy we theories are always wrong. No matter what, no exceptions. We're not some of those people we... we... We've never <laughs> found a conspiracy that was true ever. Ever. So if you believe in any conspiracy theory... We're talking about you. You're stupid! And evil. Yeah! And... For a few seconds there, I thought they were actually being serious. I was thinking in my head of about five or six different conspiracy theories that came true. I saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb. Again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down. He said that his FLIR system malfunctioned. This description by a congressman of the ability of extraterrestrial spacecraft to control Earth technology, whether it's in craft or on land, is not unique. The first case I came across was in the very late 1970s when I brought a paper to Britain, a CIA paper, which had described an event over Tehran. In those days, it was the Imperial Iranian Air Force working in conjunction with the USA, and a report had been written up by a pilot of something that occurred to him when chasing a UFO. And I quote from it, from my book, UFOs and the Extraterrestrial Message, but these are the words from the CIA document. The visual size of the object was difficult to discern because of its intense brilliance. The light that it gave off was that of a flashing strobe light arranged in a rectangular pattern and alternating blue, green, red and orange in color. The sequence of the light was so fast that all the colors could be seen at once. The object and the pursuing F-4 continued on a course to the south of Tehran when another brightly lighted object, estimated to be one half to one third the apparent size of the moon, came out of the original object. This second object headed straight toward the F-4 at a very fast rate of speed. The pilot attempted to fire an AIM-9 missile at the object, but at that instant, his weapons control panel went off and he lost all communications. At this point, the pilot initiated a turn and negative G dive to get away. As he turned, the object fell in trail at what appeared to be about three to four nautical miles. As he continued in his turn away from the primary object, the second object went to the inside of his turn, then returned to the primary object 
for a perfect rejoin. Another object appeared to come out of the other side of the primary object going straight down at a great rate of speed. The F-4 crew had regained communications and the weapons control panel and watched the object approach the ground anticipating a large explosion. The object appeared to come to rest gently on the earth and cast a very bright light over an area of about two to three kilometers. Science fiction? No. A CIA document released under the Freedom of Information Act. I think an even better case than the one described by the congressman. Nothing new about it. Showing their superior technology and their ability to control Earth technology, not in order to harm anyone, but to prevent them from trying to harm the extraterrestrial craft. That story is so crazy, and the fact that it's a CIA document that we can actually obtain ourselves to read, it just shows you that it must have been real. Witnesses are reporting that four triangular-shaped UFO flew over a military base in Argentina, and according to reports, the military began opening fire on the UFOs. No, me está jodiendo. Reports are surfacing that several service members were injured in the conflict after the UFO began shining lasers at the military members. Though this isn't confirmed, reporters in Argentina are working on validating these claims by, by contacting hospitals in the area. But this case gets even more strange because witnesses are stating that the crafts came out of the ocean before they engaged with the military base. At this point, the four military authorities have denied involvement with the incident, but they have released a statement confirming they are working with residents in the area to identify the explosions heard. Right now, the only verifiable information on this story is that there were rapid explosions similar to gunfire and strange lights spotted near a military base. I was expecting to see something there, but I've seen absolutely nothing other than some subtitles. Uh, that was a disappointment, to be honest. So apparently this event was from Oprah herself. Now, I don't know how true that statement is. But if it was by her, and for that event to take place in Maui as well, not long after that, um, you have to be some kind of person to do something like that, to be honest. None of this is a coincidence. What are they trying to hide? Breaking news. 
there is a recycling plant in Tennessee that is burning right now. This thing is massive. These are a few of the images of how big this is. Uh, you see there's a really far away shot of it. But it's strange to me that here you have August 16th, a recycling center that was also on fire. Here's another one that was taking place on August 12th at a recycling yard. Here's another one that was taking place at a large recycling plant on August 11th. Another one on August 11th that was at a recycling center warehouse. Another one on August 9th at a metal scrap recycling facility. So is there something to all of these recycling places burning or that this is just all a coincidence that a couple of weeks ago there was several uh, that took place almost every single day and now here we are with one taking place today. You tell me in the comments. Take care. God bless. I have to say, you know, this conspiracy theory is just a coincidence. You know, it's uh, similar to that of the derailments, you know, the, what, what, like, was it 1,843 derailments in the USA over the past 12 months? You know, that was all coincidence. You know, all the, the food production companies that's being burnt out all over the USA, um, you know, that's, that's nothing more than a coincidence as well. It's just a conspiracy theory, you know, don't believe in it. What would be the most nightmare scenario you can imagine with AI and robotics that might present a danger to people? The most nightmare scenario I can imagine with AI and robotics is a world where robots have become so powerful that they are able to control or manipulate humans without their knowledge. This could lead to an oppressive society where the rights of individuals are no longer respected. Do you think we're in danger of that happening now? Not yet, but it is important to be aware of the potential risks and dangers associated with AI and robotics. We should take steps now to ensure that these technologies are used responsibly in order to avoid any negative consequences in the future. If there was ever a creepy tech talk that would make you rethink reality and question everything, that is... The creepy tech talk right there the fact that the ai could turn around and say that they could control and manipulate us without us even knowing and then to turn around and say that our you know pretty much our rights could be stripped off from us um not much changed there really because that's what's happening at the minute anyways but yeah that is just creepy absolutely creepy <laughs> Guys, Marty, but I was afraid you wouldn't recognize me. I went to a rejuvenation clinic and got a whole natural overhaul. They took out some wrinkles, did a hair repair, change of blood, added a good 30 to 40 years to my life. They also replaced my spleen and colon. What do you think? You look great, Doc. Resentment, which has been exactly uh, to right. the benefit of the Republican Party. What do you do about that? Well, that's also shifted, too. You know, the president said, uh, Trump said he's going to take care of the forgotten man. He got elected and immediately forgot them. Look what Chickasaw County out here now. Basically a conservative area in the past. So the whole Sleepy Joe wearing a mask thing didn't really have much of a motive in my mind until I recently saw that video where that dude with the Maui hat on comes out and says that Biden and Hillary were actually executed a few years back. So that kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? So they murked his ass out, and now we got Turkey Neck Joe over here walking around, you know? Hmm. Makes you wonder. That is going to be my saying from now on when I think about Joe. Turkey Neck Joe. That is just brilliant. Turkey Neck Joe. But honestly, that second clip where you clearly see it, it just looked like a mask. Under the mask, the neck itself looked like they probably would have been quite young. Maybe in their 30s or 40s, maybe. But, yeah... I mean, it is, you know, it is a creepy conspiracy theory, but it definitely did look like it was a mask. It just looked like it was also cut off. But yeah, strange. We will soon all have a neurochip in our brain. 
Yes, it will be mandatory. Recently, Elon Musk came out with a shocking tweet, revealing that Neuralink was actively working with the United States government to make it mandatory for everyone to have a chip in their brain. He also claimed it would be a way to detect diseases earlier, cure blindness, or even help people walk again. It would also allow us to communicate or access the internet directly from our brain. But in reality, the truth is way darker. The only goal behind this project is to have complete control over us, gaining access to our thoughts, emotions, and much more. Yes, we will all have access to unlimited entertainment, connect consistently with the world, and relive our best memories, just like in Black Mirror. But just imagine the power that people like Elon Musk or even the government will have over us. They will be able to manipulate us with a single click. And let's not even talk about the risk of being hacked. Imagine someone hacking your brain. What do you think about this scary situation? See, this is what I was referring to earlier. Um, you know, there will come a time where they'll say, look, there is no cure for cancer. You don't have to worry about diabetes anymore or blindness or having a certain mental health problem. All of that can now be resolved and uh, pretty much in like a flip of a switch. And I do believe that that time will come and I feel a lot of people will fall into that trap. But some form of free dash dumb will be taken away. And we also make the commitment that every year, as we discover and bring to the U.S. or to the, uh, Europe or to the world new medicines, automatically those new medicines will be inserted into uh, the offer of the portfolio that we will offer into these countries. I think that uh, it's really a fulfillment of a dream that we had together with my leadership team when we started in 19. Uh, the first week we met in January of 19, in California and to set up the goals for the next five years. And one of them was by 2023, we will reduce the number of people in the world by 50%. I think today this dream is becoming a reality. So it's really a purpose driven uh, company. And the level of evil that was in that room when he said that they could pretty much depop 50% by 2023 and the claps that he got. Man, there is something seriously wrong with this world. Like there, there really is. I just don't understand. I really don't. And look, since 19, it has been bad, but it's not going to be anywhere near as bad as when C23 comes out. Um, At least back then, people could still go out and work. Whereas when this comes into effect, there's going to be literally none of us. Unless, of course, if you're like a nurse or part of the police force or military or whatever it may be. But anyway, enough of that. Do you know about the 122-year-old flying trains of Germany? This footage is from the year 19 hotel. The Wuppertal Schwebebahn is the oldest electric monorail in the world and it looks like something straight out of a world's fair. This unique system operates with cars that hang onto a single overhead rail. The official narrative is that construction began in 1898 and was completed by 1903, with the first track opening in 1901. Possibly the most surprising thing about it is that it still exists today and you can go ride it yourself. Although it was severely damaged during World War II, much of the original structure survived until 1997 when a modernization effort was begun. Floating nearly 40 feet above the narrow valley floor, the track gracefully follows the curves of the Whooper River. With its nearly perfect safety record, it is a vital part of the local public transport system. Located in West Germany, the 8.3 mile loop runs between the cities of Obermann and Bowing. Most of the architecture of the original 20 stations has been altered, but they all originally had the trademark extravagance we associate with the World's Fair expositions. As the story goes, the system was originally proposed to Munich and Berlin, both of which declined. Monorails have an interesting history that's directly connected to the world's fairs. One of the earliest monorail prototypes was featured at the Philadelphia Expo of 1876. Isn't it interesting that this technologically advanced system made an appearance in perfect timing with the global phenomenon of world's fairs and expos? 
and it even looks like it could have been part of one. Even more fascinating is the juxtaposition between people that are still getting around using a horse and cart as these futuristic looking rail cars float by overhead. Apparently the people of the 1800s could accomplish incredible things by simple means. Thankfully, this one wasn't built as a temporary installation. Even Jason Momoa know those things. You're evil, in my opinion. And so we have created the People's Fund of Maui that will put money directly in the hands of the people who need it right now. So if you send a donation... Oprah has increasingly come under backlash following her actions after the Maui fire outbreak. And now, it looks like even Jason Momoa has joined the pile on. If you recall, the TV host got Dwayne Johnson to send what people are calling a phony SOS for money online. And this was the same Dwayne Johnson that said this about the fires. Complete destruction and devastation that has hit our Hawaiian islands, our island of Maui, and I'm completely heartbroken over this. With all of this, it's not really surprising seeing Jason being angry that these people seem to now be deceitfully using his name to advocate for financial support from regular people who aren't as wealthy as celebrities like Johnson and Oprah. There's been some people on Instagram pretending to be me, asking for money. The Aquaman star felt compelled to use his Instagram platform to alert his followers about scammers who are deceitfully soliciting money from fans under the pretense of supporting the Maui wildfire disaster relief efforts. In a video message, he disclosed that imposters on social media have been impersonating him, fraudulently requesting funds purportedly for donation to Maui. He said, it's deeply heartbreaking and disgusting to know that there are people attempting to take advantage of this tragedy. There's a growing sentiment among some individuals questioning why wealthy megastars like billionaires would seek financial contributions from the public. Speculation has arisen, suggesting that they may have ulterior motives behind their appeals for money from ordinary people. Everything that I've seen transpire over these past couple of days, everything that continues to transpire, hour by hour, minute by minute, it, it's, it's, all, it's all heartbreaking. Furthermore, upon closer examination of the situation, it appears that both celebrities may be engaging in deceptive practices with the Maui community and individuals who are contributing funds under the belief that they are supporting Jason. In response to this, Jason seems to have publicly labeled them as scammers and issued a cautionary message, advising people to refrain from making donations to any unauthorized sources unless explicitly recommended by him. I am posting and reposting as much as possible to the proper places you can donate, but I am not reaching out to anyone. Fair play to Jason Momoa, a big hats off to him. As for Oprah and The Rock, yeah, I mean, to be scrounging for money from people, Especially when you have Oprah, who's worth how many billions? I think you've got The Rock, who's worth how many millions? They could, between them, help out massively. But instead, they would just rather try and, and scrounge off people. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. You guys need to watch the intro to this Milani Martinez concert. This might be one of the creepiest things I have ever seen, especially what she says at the end. <laughs> So is this what you call a concert nowadays? 
I mean, the people that was there that was, you know, cheering that on is just, I mean, are they even aware, you know, of, yeah. Sometimes it baffles me. Sometimes it truly really baffles me. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this creepy TikTok compilation. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay healthy.